Hey there, folks. We are back again and getting pretty close to wrapping things up. Last time we added the UI for participants to add their nominations to the poll. We also added UI to show which participants have currently joined the poll and we can see them added in real time. We also gave the admin the ability to remove both participants and nominations that they do not like for one reason or another. Today, we'll handle starting the vote so we'll need to scaffold out a new page for that, as well as add an event to send the votes to the server and also an event to start the poll or start the voting, I should say. We'll also fix an issue where if a participant is kicked out of the poll by an admin, they were not getting sent back to the home page. It was still keeping them on that waiting room page or the page where you nominate your nominations. As always, you can follow along with the code by going to my GitHub repo ranker course and you can follow the instructions to get started. And if you just want to follow along with where we start today, you can use 23 as your branch since today is tutorial 24. So this is the end code from tutorial 23. OK, so there are a few little minor fixes that I want to do right now. So one thing I had noticed is I'd accidentally or somehow upgraded my Valtio in my notes documentation where I write the scripts for all this ahead of time. And if you go to package.json in the client folder here, because there's multiple package.json files, I want you to go ahead and add 1.7.0 just because I did in my notes. And you'll see that this actually caused a bug that I was getting and then we're going to fix this. So go ahead and add that. And then just run from the root directory npm install to get your updated package lock.json. And we'll see what this ends up doing. But first, after this is installed, if you go to app.tsx, you can see that there's now a deprecation warning that says, please use the name option instead of just a string as the second argument you need to add name like so. Now let's go ahead and save this and run the app with npm run start. And let's start storybook in this one. Cool. Everything should be running. Now I'll show you what is happening. So here is our poll topic or waiting room page. Now, if I now do a hot refresh, let me show you what happens. So I'm in the code and let's just go to the waiting room and hit command S to resave. So there's some hot reloading and let's go back to the app. And actually, sometimes you have to save like twice or maybe go to the app component and save. Maybe that's what causes it. And there we go. We have this loader state that is stuck. And this is what I want to fix. And if you guys have been seeing this, sorry. Now a hard reload will fix it, but it's something with hot reload. And actually, this is probably good because it's showing us that we're probably not managing our state correctly. Now, where it ends up being that this is a problem is in our initialize socket action in the state. So let's go to initialize a socket. And so if there is no socket, then we want to create a socket with handlers. And what this does is it just takes the URL and it connects. And then in the background, it will try to connect. So when we create socket with handlers, we do not need to call state.socket.connect, it connects automatically. And then once it connects, if we go to socket.io, we receive this connect event, which stops loading, which is great. That'll make that little loader stop showing. If we go back to this initialize socket though, then I say else state.socket.connect, which is, which is fine. However, it is possible that we have a reference. Notice that we store state.socket as a reference, and that means that Valtio isn't managing the state of everything there. But it may be that it's already connected, and this could be why when I updated Valtio, something funny is happening. So what I want to do here is instead, I just want to return early from this whole function. If we call connect, then I want to add a statement that if we're not connected to connect, and then I want to return. And so again, if I do state.socket.connect, then once we connect, then this actions.loading will get called. 
and the loader will go away. However, what happens if we're already connected? Well, in this case, I need to make sure to call actions.stoploading. Now, which piece of code is initializing that starts the loading anyway is probably somewhere in the app or the pages component. So let's save this. And then I have, this is weird. We're getting this implicit issue. And if I just restart the TypeScript server with command shift P, that usually goes away. So there might be, my code could be bad, but my guess is there's probably some sort of TypeScript server parsing error with these getters inside of the proxy object. The last time we found a little bug where if an admin removed a participant from the poll, they were not actually sent back to the home page. And so we want to make sure they're actually fully booted out of the waiting room if the admin decides to remove them. Now, basically what we need to do is for a participant that's removed from the poll, we have a nice action that's called something like reset poll or even start over which removes the user's access token, sends them to the welcome page, and clears all of their state here by calling actions.reset. So what I want to do is go to app.typescript and add a little bit of a hook, another hook beneath. There's this big use effect hook that accesses the token, and we're going to add another effect here, which I'll do my best to explain, that checks the participant and makes sure that if they're connected, but they are not in the list of participants, then we're going to call that action.start over. And we're only going to run this effect when the participants field of the poll has changed. All right, so I have a poll here where this person on the right is Jacob and is the admin, and the person on the left is Denise, but I want to have Denise's state set here. So right now, Denise has a socket, which is connected. And then if we look at the actual poll, sorry, this is kind of small to try to get everything in here. So the poll is at the very bottom. If we look at the poll here, you can see there is a participants list with Jacob and Denise. Now let's see what happens when I actually kick out Denise. All right, so you might've seen a couple of events pop up here. So the first one is a set Poll. And let's see what the socket state is here. So they were still connected. And if we go to participants, you see though they were not in the poll. Very good. So this is the exact case. They were connected, but not in the poll. And that's why this next action where they set poll, set access token, this is the action that basically cleared all of their state. So that fixes that bug. A lot of explanation there but I hope it makes a little sense. Okay, it's now time to actually start building a new page. Sorry for that complications or those complications there. So let's add a new page, which is gonna be called voting. So once that everyone has submitted their nominations and the admin clicks start, we'll send people to this page, which we'll show how to do shortly. But let's first add a little bit of markup. All right, so I'll copy and paste some stuff here and we'll have some unused imports and fields but we're gonna use React and use state. We're gonna bring in use snapshot from Valtio. And so we're gonna get that current state uh, or snapshot of the state. We're gonna have some local state to for the user to like order their rankings of the nominations. Then we're gonna have a little confirmation dialogue to cancel the poll that we can pop up. So we need local state for that. And also a confirmation dialogue to say, hey, all the votes are in. And that's something that the admin does and we'll have a little title called voting page. But how are we going to send people to that page? Well, first of all, let's go to the state. And you may recall at the top, we just have a little enum for the different page names. So we'll have voting equals just voting. And then let's go ahead and go to the waiting room where we can actually send a new event to start the poll. And the way this is going to work is we're going to fire an action. There should be a continue or start poll button in here somewhere down towards the bottom. Aha, start, right? No, that's nominations required to start. So it's this button where we're right now only console.logging something. So we're going to have an action 
called start vote. And I'm surprised that's already defined. Maybe we define that at some point. But uh, let's go ahead and define that in our state now. Kind of perplexed as to why that exists. Did we add it today? I can't even remember. Well, maybe we added it at some point or I copied and pasted too much. I'm starting to lose my mind. This has been a bad recording. But this is exactly what we want to do. Just emit a start vote event. I think we did add this last time. Now, when we do start vote, the server will respond with a poll with the field of has started set to true. So I think our poll, if we go to the state here of the poll itself, which is in a shared poll types folder here, has a has started Boolean, as you can see. So this starts as false, false. And then when that event is sent, the server responds with has started of true. So now what I want to do is actually add a little effect in our pages. So our pages kind of has this use effect that will tell us what page to go to next. Now at the top, we actually sort of have a map mapping that enum of app pages in our state to the actual component that's imported. So let's add app page dot voting. And we'll map it to voting, which we'll import from pages voting. And then in the effect, here we're going to add a second one that says if they exist, if me exists in the poll and the current poll state uh, has started, not not has started, then we'll set the app page to voting, which then should load this voting page. So let's save this and see if we can get it to work. All right, so I've just opened the poll. And so this left one is the admin. I have three windows and I have three nominations. So now I want to start voting here. And so they all get sent to the voting page. Pretty cool how that happened, huh? So the next thing we'll do is actually add some little checkbox components that we can click on to toggle voting. Now, it's not a draggable list. This is going to be a simple UI. And it'll make more sense once I show it to you. But for now, what we're going to use is this uh, rank checkbox. And basically, we'll show each of our nominations in a box like this. And when we click it, it kind of toggles whether or not uh, it, it basically sends an event. And then we can pass a property to this to show the actual ranking number of the item. Again, this one maybe is clear once we actually put it inside of our voting page here. But first, I'm just going to add a little header. And it will still be in this flex, I think. And so if there's a poll, I and mean, this is just a please TypeScript, I think. So we'll say, select your top votes per voter as a number of choices. So this is just to let them know how many votes they have. And then we'll use their number of votes, which we're calling rankings, and we'll subtract that from the total allowed to show how many votes they have remaining. So you can see it says select your top three choices and three votes remaining. So let's now render those check boxes. And I think we'll still put it in the flex here. And then we need to import this rank checkbox. But before getting this to work, we need to add a function to toggle nomination. And so what this is going to do is it's going to update this ranking field. So this ranking fields will just be an ordered array of our votes. So let's add a toggle nomination function. All right, so what this does is it takes the ID of the nomination. Now remember, we're actually passing that ID to the rank choice checkbox. And so when we call on select, we actually have access to that ID because we're kind of in a map right here. We're not kind of in a map, we are in a map. So first of all, we'll look to see if our rankings has that ID already. And then we'll also compute how many votes they have remaining. So basically we'll see the votes per voter minus the number of rankings they have. And if it's greater than zero, that means they can still toggle or add more new votes. Then we see if the position is less than zero, that means that it wasn't found. So it doesn't yet exist in the rankings. Then we're going to add that ID to the rankings. But that's 
only going to happen if they also have remaining votes allowed. If not, that means we need to actually remove that value from the rankings, and this will be clear in a second. And so we'll just sort of set the rankings to the current rankings minus wherever this position is. So we're basically just removing the element at this index. Then there's one other little function in here called get rank, which basically just finds the position of the ID there so that we can actually see if it's first, second, or third. So it's basically the index plus one. So let's add this get rank, and it basically finds the index of that ranking. And so if the position's less than zero, it's not found. Otherwise, we just increase the index by one. This will make more sense when we show it. All right, it looks like these updated in all of our uh, browsers, which is good. So if you click number one, it adds it. And if you click two, it adds it. Let's say I click one now. It will remove this. And then the top of the mountain, which I can't spell, will become number one. And so that's kind of how these work. It would be nicer to maybe have a draggable list. Now, I think I did something wrong with the style. I think I want these not in that flex. So let's look at the markup and maybe where I'm displaying this uh, PX2 div. Where do I want this? So I think it was in the right place, but I forgot that we have to add the confirmation buttons. So we're going to add the buttons just before this last outer div. And they will be as follows. So this will be the outer thing will also be itself a flex column with centered items. It'll have a button that sets that confirm votes, which then makes confirm votes true and shows this dialogue saying, hey, you can't change your votes after submitting. So it's a little warning. We'll import the confirm dialogue. We do not yet have this submits rankings. Then if they're admin, we can allow them to cancel the poll and it will be very similar. It will open up a confirmation dialog that says this will cancel the poll and remove all users. So now we just need this submit rankings and cancel poll. So let's go to the state and add those two actions and I'll add it beneath the start vote. So submit rankings just sends in the actual rankings of the users from that local state with the submit rankings event name and cancel poll is with no payload. So I think everything's good to go for today. So I have everything open. So let's uh, do all the votes for this person. Let's submit them. Confirm. Now nothing's going to happen yet. But let's do that for this person too. Confirm. And this person confirm. And let's maybe open up in Chrome the dev tools and see what happens. So this person confirmed voting. So let's go to Redux. Let's just see what our poll state is. So basically, it's returned with everyone's rankings, and we're going to be able to use that knowledge to actually send the user to the next page in the next tutorial. So everything's working pretty good. Uh, that was a little tedious, and the next one will also be, but somewhat easier. So see you then.